Hey everybody, Diagnostic Derek. Today I got a 2008 Chevrolet Silverado, uh, 5.3 liter flex fuel engine. Uh, up until now, the videos I've been posting have all been pretty basic circuit testing, basic drivability diagnostics and stuff like that. I think today we're going to get into something a little more complicated. Uh, basically what I got on this truck is a uh, no crank uh, customer tried to jump it no good put a battery on it no good uh, so they had it towed in uh, preliminary work that I've already done was uh, I jumped the starter relay verified that the starter does crank and it does but the engine did not start when I did that it just cranked over uh, so started doing a little scan tool work and uh, what I've discovered here is that we have a no communication with the engine control module situation uh, intermittently the mill check engine light on the dash has been kind of flashing or flickering the fuel gauge has been kind of doing some crazy stuff uh, i have already verified that the other modules on the high speed network are communicating i can talk to the transmission uh, airbag uh, vehicle communication module abs all of that's got good communication so what we're what we're going after here is a no communication with the engine control module symptom uh, so we got some computer network diagnostics to do which are always fun so uh, I'm gonna bring the camera along for the ride and uh, hopefully we'll get a get a good video out of this and maybe show you guys how I approach these sort of problems so well let's just get started okay so the first just quick easy test come up here to the front of the passenger side head and we're just checking visually checking this ground wire uh, that grounds to this stud. This is uh, the PCM grounds through this circuit. So we're just checking to make sure it's not corroded, the wires aren't frayed or broken or anything. Uh, hopefully we, you know, you look, come check that and maybe you get lucky and it's just a ground problem. It doesn't look like we're gonna get lucky. So uh, we will still have to volt drop this ground from the PCM, but just a quick visual check is always good. It might save you some time. So at least we tried. So after verifying that ground connection at the head is good, uh, the next thing I like to do here is a quick network uh, integrity test. Uh, we know that the term, one of the two terminating resistors, uh, there's 220 ohm terminating resistors on, on the CAN circuit. One of them is in the PCM. So if we had broken network wires going to the PCM, uh, or you know if they were shorted to ground or open circuit or anything like that we would be able to see that with this test so what I've done is I've connected a DLC breakout box to the data link connector and I've connected my meter set to ohms and I've connected the positive and negative meter leads to pins 6 and 14 6 and 14 are always your can high can low wires so with the key off, I've got the key out of the ignition, you know, give it a couple minutes to make sure the network goes to sleep. And what we want to see here is 60 ohms and 61. So basically we're right on the money. Uh, whenever you wire two, uh, two resistors of the same value in parallel on a circuit, the resistance measurement you'll get will be half of the value of one resistor. So on our CAN network, we've got two 120 ohm terminating resistors. So if the network is good and they are still in parallel, there are no breaks, no shorts, then 60 ohms is what the meter will show. So we've got 60 ohms. That tells us that, you know, we don't have a network wiring problem. So we don't really have to worry too much about checking uh, network wiring. Uh, we still need to go to that PCM. We need to check powers and grounds at the PCM with a volt drop test. Uh, and then we'll go from there. It's looking like this might turn out to be a bad PCM, but we can't uh, can't sell this customer a new PCM until we know for sure. So we'll move on down the line and knock out a few more tests. Okay, so I was gonna get out my Pico scope and uh, check the uh, network CAN signals for integrity to make sure that they were uh, uh, you know good quality signals and we didn't have anything crazy going on there. But uh, I decided instead of doing that that I wanted to keep this basic you know keep the just use basic tools to do this so uh, another way that you can test your uh, network with uh, with a meter is you can take your your voltmeter just set to voltage and you can check voltages on this pin 16 pin 14 can high can low and uh, so what I've done is I've attached my meter negative lead to uh, pin 4 pin 4 and pin 5 on your DLC breakout are always ground 
Uh, so I've attached the meter to pin four for the ground and then I'm going to attach the positive lead to pin six can high and about 2.5 volts, 2.5, 2.6, something like that is what I usually see on a good network for pin six. Uh, then we're going to switch over to pin 14 and about 2.2 uh, is, is normal, you know, something in that range, 2.2, 2.1, something like that. Uh, this this test isn't quite as exact as the uh, the ohm test that the ohm test test in the network to be 60 ohms key on it or with key off and the key out and the network asleep that's that's a great test that'll really really go a long way for you this test is a little more subtle because the voltages do vary a little bit uh, we just want to make sure we're not getting anything extreme uh, if if we go to pin six and we see something you know down below 2.1 or so, uh, or if we see something above three volts, you know, above 3.8, 3.9, 2.8, 2 2.9, uh, up in the three volt range, we know we've got a problem. On pin 14, anything below one volt or above 2.4, 2.5, something like that usually indicates a problem. But these voltages look like what we expect to see on a good network. So it doesn't look like we've got a network issue here. It seems like we've just got a non-communicative PCM. So, uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll go into the hood and there's a couple more quick checks I like to do before I start doing the voltage drops at the PCM. So we'll go do those real quick. Okay, so I'm going to check the fuses that power the PCM uh, and what I'm looking at. So we've got fuse 56, which is uh, hot and run or start. I've got the key on right now. Uh, 56 is down here on this bottom corner that's hot and then uh, fuse 12 which is the hot at all times ECM battery fuse and it is this this fella here so we've got good good power to our two ECM feed fuses and then while we're here we can also check the uh, engine fuse that is powered by the powertrain relay uh, it's fuse 4 and it should be hot uh, with the key on because the ECM should be controlling the PCM the, the powertrain relay and yeah that's kind of what I expected we've got nothing there so we don't have any powertrain relay control so Yep, I'd say a, a failed engine control module is still our prime suspect. I've got one more quick test I want to do before we go down to that PCM and start trying to back probe it. So let's try that. So what I want to do is just, I just want to check and see if we're getting a 5 volt reference out of the PCM. So I've got the map sensor unplugged here and I'm just going to back probe the 5 volt reference circuit, which is the gray wire and uh, take a look at that. So we do have a five volt reference, so that's good. So uh, let's check a few more of the five volt reference signals and see if we find anything, uh, many, anything out of place. So here I've got the mass airflow unplugged and the tan black wire is the IAT reference voltage which the IAT pulls that voltage down to ground. So we want to check this with it unplugged and we're looking for five volts. And again, you know, we've got good five volts there. So let's, let's do maybe one more of these. So we're under the dash looking at the accelerator pedal sensor. And these two middle wires, the white, black, and the tan are the two five volt references for APP1 and APP2. So we can just check them both real quick with a back probe. Uh, meter displays a good five volts on that one. We'll switch over to the other one. And uh, we got a good five volts on that one too. So it looks like, looks like our five volt references are, are in, in good shape. So, hmm, very interesting. Got the cover pulled off this PCM connector. And uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a pink wire pin 19 and a red wire with a right white stripe in here at pin 20 and then this big black wire that's our PCM ground so we're just gonna take our voltmeter I've got the key turned on 
and we'll just do some quick voltage drop tests to verify that those uh, powers and grounds are good. So when I back probe this ground, I want to see, you know, less than 100 millivolts, ideally. You know, we want it, want this to be a pretty low value. And it looks like we're plenty low. Uh, let's see here, our meter's reading. 11 millivolts so that ground is is good and we could even uh, you know go one step further if we wanted to uh, we could take a, a powered test light and hook it up to that and make sure that the test light burns but we've got the key on and uh, we know the circuits loaded so we're feel pretty good about that so then we'll switch over here and we'll get this uh, red wire back probed maybe trouble getting a good connection here. Again, sometimes when you're back probing, it can be tough to get a good connection. We may have to switch over to a wire piercing probe. Okay, there we go. Got a good connection there. So we got battery voltage. We're it's showing 14 volts right now. I do have a battery charger hooked up in uh, maintainer mode just to keep the voltage up because the battery is getting pretty low. So now we want to get the uh, pink wire. Try to get in there and back probe that. Again, it's tough to get a connection, especially on these very small circuits. Uh, tell you what, let's do. Uh, we'll switch over and we'll grab a, a, a piercing probe. Check this red white wire again with a piercing probe. And that's a we got a good good battery voltage there. And now we'll get this pink wire, maybe. There we go. So we got good battery voltage on both of those wires. So next thing we can do sorta is just, uh, sorry about knocking the camera over. Uh, the next thing we'll do is, since we know we've got good voltage coming in here, but we're having trouble with our back probing, uh, we'll unplug this. I'm gonna shut the key off and unplug this and just visually inspect the connector, uh, make sure that the terminals aren't spread out and uh, or corroded or anything like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything there to really be concerned with. Let's uh, let's do a quick drag test. Let's see, we're gonna be on the second row. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, number five and six on the second row. So, uh, 
first we'll do a uh, just another pin to get a feel. Okay, that's that one's too small. Let me go up a size. And this is just a terminal cleaning tool that I'm using. So I'll show you the uh, the set after we get done here. Uh, so I just want to kind of check. Okay, looks like this one's too big. So one, two, three. I don't want to jam this in there and open up any of these pins, but yeah, if I go down a size, it's too small. I have no drag. And then if I go up to this size, then it's too big. It doesn't go in at all. Like I said, you don't want to force this because you don't want to damage those terminals. So, but looking at them, I don't see any reason to suspect that there's any terminal problem there. So it looks like we've got a dead PCM here. So quick recap of what we've done. Uh, we have no communication with the engine computer. All of the other modules on the high-speed network are communicating. We've verified the network by measuring resistance between DLC pins 6 and 14, 60 ohms, that's good. So we know our network's not open or shorted. Uh, we verified powers and grounds to the PCM. Uh, we checked the 5 volt references, which interestingly, the 5 volt references are all good. Normally on a dead PCM, you don't have 5 volt reference. So what that seems to imply to me is that uh, this PCM is probably uh, functional, at least in its ability to operate the 5 volt reference. Uh, what it's, it's just lost its ability to communicate. Uh, it's kind of interesting that it's not grounding or controlling that uh, engine relay, but it may be waiting for an RPM signal or something like that. I'm not really sure. So uh, I think we've done enough due diligence that we can call this a, a failed engine computer and go ahead and have the service rider give a quote on it. We'll get a new one, uh, get it put in and programmed and uh, you know, hopefully get this truck started and running. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got the new engine control module installed here and uh, I've got my J2534 unit hooked to the laptop and we are reprogramming it or programming it right now so when this gets done we'll do the theft system relearn and then we'll see if this truck is going to start for us now well I replaced the engine control module programmed it I've finished the theft deterrent relearn so we just replaced a very expensive engine control module to attempt to solve a no crank situation and uh, the good news is, I haven't turned the key and started it yet, the good news is that the new computer is communicating with the scan tool and the old one wasn't, so that's a good sign. Uh, the dash is, seems to be working better now, the fuel gauge is steady, it's not doing the crazy stuff it was doing. Theft light comes on for a bulb check and then goes out, so here we go. Ah, music to my ears. A little hesitation there, it's okay. It's a new engine control module. We'll give it a minute, let it get settled in. Uh, the other thing I like to do, uh, normally when you do the theft deterrent relearn on these, you only need one key to do it, but I always like to get all the customer's keys just so I can verify that they all work after the job is done. So we'll check the other key. Watch and see if the theft light goes out. It does. Fantastic. So. Uh, Next thing we need to do is uh, we'll need to do the crank sensor relearn. Uh, anytime you replace the engine computer on one of these Chevrolets, you, you have to do the uh, crank variation relearn. So we'll do that next and then uh, take it for a test drive and call it fixed. Okay, to do this crankshaft position sensor relearn, uh, we need to have a warm engine. So I've already let the engine idle uh, for about 15 minutes. It's, it's up to operating temp, AC off, vehicle in park. And uh, what it's going to have us do is snap the throttle, and we want to get it up to four or five thousand RPMs. But what you don't need to do is hold it against the fuel cutoff or the rev limiter. So you want to put the throttle directly to the floor as quickly as you can, and as it approaches four thousand, five thousand RPMs, you want to get your foot out of it quickly. Don't hold it against the rev limiter. So go ahead and hit OK. And uh, oh, you got to be holding the brake. It gets mad if you're not holding the brake. So I got my left foot on the brake. I got to start all over now. All right, and now we're going to do just a wide open throttle snap. 
And there we go. Successfully relearned the crankshaft position sensor. So we're out on a test drive. Seems to be running pretty well. Uh, got no warning lights, good power, good throttle response. Everything seems to be working normally. So looks like we've got it fixed. Uh, my camera battery is just about to die. So I'm just gonna keep this short so I can shut the camera off. And I'm well, sorry about the camera bouncing around. We're moving down the road here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this part of the video off and get back to the shop and try to do a wrap up before my battery dies. 2008 Silverado came in with a no crank. We had no communication with the engine control module. The other modules on the high speed network were communicating okay. Uh, we did a couple of quick network checks, checked the resistance between pin six and port, pin 14 at the DLC. It should be 60 ohms and it was. That tells us our network's not open and it's not shorted. Uh, we did a couple of quick voltage checks, verified our CAN voltages with the key on. Those looked good. Uh, we visually inspected that ECM ground. It was okay. We checked the ECM fuses, all good there. We did a five volt reference check. Our five volt references were good, which is a little unusual. Most of the time, if you have a completely dead module, you're not gonna have a five volt reference. It's gonna be missing or low or something like that. Uh, this one actually still had its five volt reference. We did the uh, voltage drop test of the powers and grounds at the module, which I cannot stress how important that is to verify those powers and grounds before you condemn a module, make absolutely sure that they're good. Uh, because you don't want to replace a module and then not fix the car and find out later that you had a, a pow power or a ground problem. Uh, it was a little unusual with having the 5 volt reference there. That makes me assume that the module was working to some extent. It had to at least know that the key was on and it had to know, hey, it's time to turn on the 5 volt reference circuits. Um, I would assume it just lost its ability to communicate on the network. Uh, and obviously if it can't communicate on the CAN network, if it can't pass that theft deterrent data back and forth with the body module, uh, you're not gonna be able to start your engine. So we did everything right. We did our due diligence, did our checks. We replaced that module and we got the truck started. Uh, I didn't get into the programming for this video because I wanted to keep the video focused on just, uh, sorry about that door dinger going off nonstop. <laughs> we, uh, I wanted to focus just on the uh, diagnosis on diagnosing that bad module making sure we knew had a you know knew for sure that it was going to fix the truck before we put it on or at least know as, as sure as we can know uh, so i wanted to focus the video on that maybe later on in another video we'll get into using gmsps or ford ids or something like that for module programming but uh, we'll save that for another day uh, it's 10 minutes after five it's time to go home so that's what i'm going to do this one's fixed and uh, we'll see it again the next time it breaks.